Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have a fun conversation with a dear friend of mine, Miss Hallie, and she is joining us from the uh, lovely country of Canada. So we're doing like cross the borders kind of vibe going on here. And we are going to have a conversation with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife, specifically about sex. Oh, yes. We are going to let Freddie talk with us about sex. And Hallie and I actually had um, some conversation previously where um, she has listened and watched my some of my videos. And, and she, too, also communicates with Freddie in the afterlife a lot. And so we've had conversations about that and about the topic of sex since I did do some channeling videos with other celebrities talking about this topic. So I thought it would be fun for the three of us, since Hallie, you know, Freddie so well, to just try to have a candid adult conversation. And by adult, I don't mean X-rated. I mean, adult as in mature conversation. Now with Freddie, that may not happen. He's playful and fun, but we're going to see what comes out. All right. All right. So Hallie, Hey, thanks for coming on with me and being, oh, thanks uh, for having me. being willing to, to have this unique conversation. Um, I should also mention that Hallie is also a medium and she does, um, intuitive connection as well. So I'm um, someone that I, uh, a good friend of mine that we can have real, um, accurate conversations like this. So, um, for all of you who don't know her, there you go. Okay. So let's, should we bring him in? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's already here, you guys, for those of you who don't um, sense or know, I literally get hot. All of a sudden, I am like warm. I feel it in my heart. And it's not an attraction thing, friends. It's definitely an energetic thing as Freddie is such an empathic um, energy for me. That's how I connect with him. And so I feel him that way. But this topic is hot. <laughs> so... I'm sure he's going to be real fun with that, but I do see yellow. I'm going to tell everybody I do see yellow, which is solar plexus spirit, which is also on purpose. So there is a deeper, besides the fun, we're going to have a deeper purpose and meaning to having this conversation now, very intimate and also playful. Okay. Because we can talk about serious topics or, or very um, important topics. Um, and also still enjoy the conversation that we have and, and, and the energy around it. So that's what I feel, Hallie. I'm not sure. How do you, um, how do you connect and receive Freddie as he's kind of stepping in here? He is very playful. I don't know what he's going to say. <laughs> you told me you could tell everybody you told me before we started that you're like i tried to get it out of him but he wouldn't tell me yeah. <laughs> right all right so we're just going to have conversation as though hallie and i are just having to talk about freddie and you guys just get to listen in on us talking with him okay real casual okay so, all right, Fred, um, you've been waiting to have this conversation. It's a bit early for me to be talking about sex, but um, hey, whatever. It's a dreary day outside. It could be a good day to uh, just lay in bed and, and hang out. Um, is there anything initially out of the gate here that you would like to, um, I want to say, focus on or share with us about this topic? interesting um i literally feel like uh, monogamy and relationships he's kind of showing me a, li a list of things that he and i have talked about previously around the topic of sex without actually talking about sex he's telling me um what i feel him saying is that this is a transcendent thing this is something that is is important and he's saying like it's transcendent like sex in a human body there's nothing like it. Like he's talking to me about the energy of the sensuality of it, the sensory. He's making me feel like eating a really good meal, like a good hamburger, like eating that meat. <laughs> like, and for my friends who are vegan, sorry, eating a really good chocolate cake. That's totally vegan, flourless chocolate cake or whatever. Right. It's like that. It's like something eating something that's so decadent or so like 
super salty on the mouth or super sweet or something that just, ooh, just really very sensory and he's likening it to eating and uh, saying that it is transcendent with a body that he, um, part of the information that comes through the way I'm translating it is that the senses or the sensory pieces are what makes it so incredible what makes it so worthwhile and worthy. It's not necessarily the partner that you have or the partnership. It's the fact that there is the ability for bodies to intertwine and to come together, whether it's for a nighttime or a lifetime, like he'd say, <laughs> nighttime or lifetime. Um, it's interesting because I literally want to ask him about monogamy. What does he think about like um, monogamous relationships and stuff? But I know that that's not the intent. I'm trying to talk around this topic of sex um, it feels like he was very polyamorous in his relationships. And at that time, maybe even people would say promiscuous or one night stand type things, but I don't necessarily feel that to be true. It feels more like the interactions that he had with people were playful and open. And we're all adults here. He says, we're all adults here. We're all adults here. We all make our own choices. And the feeling of feeling good in our bodies is something that can be wonderful, blissful, blissed out. He's like blissed out when it's shared. He's like making me feel very tantra, you guys. So tantra is like sacred sex. He's like making me feel like it's very tantra. Like he's showing me very much the third eye, the crown, very like spiritual, but not deep core spiritual, just like this, oh, everything's great. Like kind of like champagne, like bubbles in your head. Like that is what he's giving me as far as being with people. And then he's also, he is showing me, I'll let you talk, Kelly, anytime and <laughs> me. He is showing me also multiple partners at the same time. So for those of you who are even remotely curious about that, yes, that is 100% a legitimate, accurate expression and experience that he certainly did have. So there's no judgment here about any of this, about polyamory, about monogamous relationships, about marriage or partnerships or anything like that, or sex, sex partners, types of, of, of sexual arrangements or anything like that. No, there's no judgment at all. Please, everybody just know that here on Above Life channel. So try to mind your P's and Q's in the chat. All right. So how do you feel, Hallie, about some of this stuff? That was a whole litany of things. And we know, because you and I have talked, that yeah. I skirt around the topic because I try to stay a little more PG-13 in my, my work just because then YouTube, you know, but this is a like special thing. Yeah. So we're going to classify it as such so YouTube doesn't get mad at me. But so how do you feel about all that stuff, all those topics? Anything grab you that he's saying to say, Bridget's not saying this? <laughs> well, <laughs> because you know that's the truth. <laughs> What he's saying is the <laughs> just say it, girl. Just say it with the red face. Just say it. We talked about being on camera. We are thinking yeah. just doing yeah. audio, but we're trying to do this on camera and this might end up just being an audio anyway, because I feel like a high school kid, girl, or like a teenager. <laughs> What's he saying, Hal? What's he saying? He, he's well, he's, he's saying it, it's the connection. It, it's the whole body connection, but it's also a soul connection at the same time. And it's not, sex is more than just the act of intercourse. It, it's a whole body of work from yes. beginning to end. He said it, it the sensual part of just like running your fingers down the spine of your partner. Mm -hmm. He does this thing it. at the chin. I can yeah. see this chin thing like that. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, kissing every part of them. Uh, it, it's a whole, mm -hmm. whole thing. It, Interesting, his mouth. I can see his mouth. He's a little braggy about his mouth. Do you notice that? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't he feel like, look at these lips. Wouldn't you want these lips on your body? He's like, look at these lips, look at these lips. Fred, I have to say though that, yeah, those lips, yeah, very nice lips. But so the type of partner or body type of partner, does that really matter? Now that you're an afterlife spirit, I know you're reflecting on human expression, but how do you feel about that insights insights onto that body type 
because I'm looking at your lips going, hmm, a lot of women love you. Mm hmm. He's kind of like been there, done that. <laughs> did you, did you get that five? Cal, oh, yes. Been yes. there, done that. But he's really yeah. explicit. You guys, I'm just being really super transparent. He like shows us pictures. You see that, Hal? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I'm almost like, oh my God. I'm like, so this is not um, supposed to be pornographic, but it's okay, you guys. We can't, our third eyes, both Hallie and I do see clairvoyantly. I should, I should probably mention that. How we get information is very similar clairvoyantly. Hallie does have more of a, um, I would say more of a, a, a kindred, a, more of a developed friendship with him where he's going to be more, he's going to push me and think it's funny, but with you, he'll literally just talk to you. So when it comes to partner or body type, is there anything that he has to share about that? Let's kind of feel into that. I see a lot of yellow based upon what you said about the soul connection, but I'm focusing on his lips. Maybe because speaking our truth. Yeah or bringing his gifts into the world, his lips through his mouth, but also then the sensory to receive that way and to give that way. Cause he's literally, I see a woman's body and I see him. Let me just say this without totally saying this, like seeing him give to a woman is what I'm saying. And that doesn't fit what we know intellectually of Freddie Mercury and his sexual preferences and partnerships. But then he says to me, been there, done that. But what, it, what he's saying is, um... Like he has a, a different perspective as well because he's in the laugh afterlife. Yes, he preferred men when he was alive in life, but he said now it, it it doesn't matter. It's because he doesn't see the sexes as male and female anymore, and he said it's more it's more of what's inside that's the connect, the connection that he makes and for those of our friends on the lgbtq plus i etc um community yes like pansexual as yes. far as orientation yeah. is, is much more the vibe which is to be fair that's kind of how i would describe what i have shared about sexuality in general when i feel spirits in the afterlife or spirits now because it really feels like like i always get such a um, the hypocrisy is crazy in humanity about um, certain people, especially it seems like men, sometimes women too, where they're very like staunch and they're, well, I would never be with a man or I would never be with a woman. It has to be the opposite sex, not the same sex. And oh, I would never, I could never, that's not, that's not the way, the right way. When um, spirit and us, each of us in our spirit essence is both male and female. We're both, both. So when you reject one concept or thought or ideology, you're rejecting a part of yourself. And then the afterlife, this all kind of comes together as one wholeness. So kind of the vibe that Freddie is talking about to me, when, when you say that Hallie, as an interpretation of what he's sharing, it feels like God and goddesses. We're all gods and goddesses. It reminds me of the a Hindu God aspect, goddess, God aspect, Ganesh or Ganesha, which is the elephant, the blue depicted blue elephant, um, um, a deity. And, and for me, it's both Ganesh, Ganesha. Like every time I channel that energy and I get Ganesh, Ganesha energy in that beautiful elephant, it's really both male and female. And it's not one or the other. And so that's kind of the vibe that I get from Freddie when he's trying to show that this is transcendent. Like, yes. It's transcendent. We can talk about sex in the human form. Yes, absolutely. But it's transcendent. And he, it kind of feels like he's saying it has its roots in spirituality in spirit. Yes. It's yes. A, it, the roots of sex, it comes from spirit, not just from the core need of humanity to reproduce. He's like, it comes from the need and the desire for the connection through joy, through the joy, just the joyful, like, Ooh, like he makes me feel like the liquid, like by I'm going to be real. I'm going to be just a, as open and explicit as I can be without being too graphic, but he's literally showing me through the flow of the fluids in the body, that that is like a golden elixir and that it is literally medicine for the mind and that the body needs sex to let the mind release energetically. Now I'm sure there's going to be doctors and psychologists and people that say, oh, that's endorphins. And oh, that's the same kind of thing you get when you are a runner and you run past a certain point and you just get endorphins released and the serotonin and whatever it is in the brain. 
the cortisol or whatever it is, that stress relief, that's true. It's like this magic elixir and he's showing me the yellow, um, he's sh showing me the representation of body fluids that release when we have sex, whether it be in our mind chemicals or in the actual physical act of having sex with another person or multiple people, um, it feels like this is something that is a core need and it's from the spirit trying to be in service to the human body and making the link, the truest relationship for the human expression between the mind and the body, because the mind and the body and the heart and the soul are like, they're alliances, like they're couples, okay? And these couples are like the heart and the, the heart and the soul to me is like a couple and the mind and the body is like a couple, but the soul in this couple is like, hey body, yeah. Okay. Let me help you out. You know, kind of thing. I really want to support you and encourage you to be more um, present to your partner, the mind. So here's how you can do this. And it expands. It opens the opportunity for a, not even a deeper connection, but a more fulfilling, more fulfilling and robust connection. And again, it comes back to then almost that energy of Tantra, sacred sex. That's how it feels to me. At least when I'm looking at him, I'm like a harem of women or a harem of men, it doesn't matter. It's a harem. No. Yes. It's, it's the many is what he's showing me, the opportunity to be with many. And he's sharing isn't about, okay, so we talk about the numbers of sex partners. Let's have this conversation. Isn't about the, the, um, this need to like prove yourself or be this, be all that, or have, like, it's not because something isn't enough. He's saying it's because it's so much that it's beautiful that you wanna share it. It's almost like a hippie vibe. Like yes. free love, yeah. let's share the love. Yeah. Like legitimately, you guys, it literally feels like expression of love from him. And while you might say, oh yeah, it's, uh, he just is, you know, the desire that he has is off the charts and stuff, or, and maybe enhanced by, you know, drugs or ecstasy or whatever it might be, whatever at that time. But, but the truth is, is genuinely, it feels like a, a freedom of expression of love, just yeah sharing love, receiving love. And it's non, it's not commitment based or non-committal and it's not even outcome based. It's really about the process of the exchanging. Um, where also, he's also showing me it was a different time then. And so safe sex wasn't a thing as much as it is yeah. now, obviously, especially at that time with all the, when AIDS became, started to really, people became really aware of it. And all of a sudden it's like everywhere. And it's like this. And then, then we go through like STDs and now STIs and all that kind of stuff. We've been through many iterations of sexual education and body wellness and sexual health and wellness and stuff like that. But he's showing me like, remember, it was a different time then. It was a different time then. But it doesn't, that's not to say that now you can't still find yourself in, um, in, how do I say this? In places or situations where you can have the ability to feel free to express and exchange love and also be safe, healthy, and well in regards to that. Also, obviously, I want to be like responsible here and say that for everybody that's listening, you know, make sure you're having safe sex, everyone public service announcement. But um, I find that interesting because he's literally showing, literally showing me the multiple partners of the harems. Do you see that vibe yeah, too? Yeah. Have you guys, have yeah. you guys talked about that Hallie at all? Yeah. yeah, we have. Okay. Do you, are you comfortable sharing anything that he shared with you? Because he knows that I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't know how much I can talk about that on camera, but well, he, I mean, he did in his life. He had multiple partners at one time. It was, I mean, I, I think up to about 10 partners at one time. Mm. And it was just, um, it was just a coming together. Mm. It's like and, a party. The 10 people looks like a party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He said it shows, and I see multiple genders male yes. and female yeah. at the same time. Yeah. And it's more like everybody's having sex in the same room. Not everybody's on the same bed, having sex with each other at the same time. I want to be really clear. That's what I see. Yeah. 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 It's not that they, it's like a yeah. lounge or a, a yeah. house and people are just in their own kind of little cocoon space kind of thing, yeah. but it's not like hiding it. You got to hide it. You got to hide it. There's no shame. That's the, that's the multi-million dollar thing. Yeah. There's no shame around 
the having of sex. There's no shame around it. Like hi- having to hide it, yeah. you know, or being and, ashamed of the body at all. There's yeah. none of that. And he also shares, I mean, what you like to do, whether you, you know, you want to do some role playing or whatever, it doesn't matter. He said, as long as it's between two or more consenting adults and and nothing is off limits, but he stresses the consenting. He said, "If, if another person is not comfortable, I would never do it because I'm, I'm not forcing myself by power onto anybody. It, they won't have to want to receive it. Right. So just because you're Freddie Mercury, did you feel that sense of responsibility to have to kind of maybe gauge somebody else's actual willingness to participate in like a threesome, foursome, let's just be clear, foursome, fivesome, because it looks <laughs> like he literally, there were like multiple yeah, yeah. people together. Um, and men and women, I'm going to be clear on that. I don't just see a bunch of men. I do see women yeah. also. That's accurate, right? Yeah. Yeah. Even later on when he, everybody knows he's gay, basically. It's like the worst kept secret, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. But but did you feel responsibility, Freddie, about that? I mean, to discern or whatever, because there's also alcohol involved and there's also other things happening. So how did you handle that, that part of it? Because you're Freddie Mercury, man, you're Freddie Mercury. So you could kind of exert your influence if you really wanted to do that. How did you handle that? Did you see it? Oh, he says, um, the vibe I'm getting is that it's important to have people around you that you trust so that if you are in a place where your, your judgment is impaired or your judgment isn't quite so good, he says, I'm not an angel. I'm not perfect. I'm not a saint. (laughs) I am not a saint. I am not a saint. I'm like, yeah, we know I'm not a saint. Um, but he's like, you have to trust the people around you because someone will inevitably, um, kind of be that checks and balances or ask, or kind of be like, oh, he says, and like energetically, you can feel when you're not, it's not right. And you just, you have to be willing to pull back or, or you also have to trust the people that come into your space to be able to have autonomy, to make their own choices. And if they, it's hard to gauge if someone else is saying that they want to be with you because it's you or because you're a famous person. He's like, um, you never really know that. And you just have to give them the benefit of the doubt that it's just about sharing and feeling good and, and feeling joy, that joyful energy, that life kind of like that sourcing energy from each other and just what is feeling good. Interesting. I, I also see, I do see some like, um, I don't want to say rough sex stuff. But he says, that's more private. He's like, that's more, that's not like a necessarily a group setting, Bridget. He's like yep. being really clear. Did you just see that? He literally sh- like closed the doors and said, that's yep. a little more private. And I can see that with like three, at least three people, like there's three of them. I can see that too. So um, we're just going to out Freddie in all these ways and share all these little intimate details because he is super comfortable being forthright and honest about things. And I think it's good to have healthy talk about sex especially when it's consenting adults, like you said, Hallie, yeah. consenting adults. So, all right. So anybody else famous you ever slept with, Freddie? I'm, he's showing me parties. Like I can see other famous people at his parties. So I can see other famous people kind of enjoying things at his parties. But I don't know, has he slept? It looks like he has but I don't know if I should say <laughs> what it looks like. <laughs> we might get in trouble. Can we get sued for that? I think we could. Would you, well, let's say Hallie, what, what can you say without exactly naming names medically <sighs> about other people um, at his parties where things were pretty open, sexually open, expressive? Well, maybe just that uh, people that tr- traveled in the same circles as him men and women <laughs> yes There's men both. and women yes yeah yes one person's coming to mind but there's still actually two people but they're still alive and i don't want to get into trouble 
Yeah. So interesting. All right. Okay. So is there anything else around um, in this environment or this arena that we should tap into that I'm not paying attention to? Let's just kind of see. See something blue. So that's like third eye again. That's like clairvoyant. I'm getting a lot of visual images. Are you? I think he thinks it's hilarious to show me stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez, Freddie, like. <laughs> I so want to say it's like spiritual pornography. You know, it's like spiritual porn, you know? <laughs> I'm like, okay, 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 third eye board. Okay, 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 okay. Which I also don't want to, um, um, again, non judgment or anything like that. I just, we're adults here, so we're having a conversation. All right, so what else? People have asked about his relationship with Jim, and I'm wondering if we should touch on that or not. Are you comfortable talking about that? Hallie, do you have, yeah. do you have, do you, have you had conversations with him about that? Are you comfortable talking about that? Yes, yeah, I'm comfortable talking about that. Okay. Are you cool with talking about um, actual relationships, Fred? He's like, you're trying to redirect again. Okay. <laughs> Is there anything I'm missing about the sexuality piece or sexual expression piece that should be talked about that we should talk about? So he, I literally just heard tools. <laughs> so I heard, <laughs> like he's going to make recommendations from the afterlife for sex toys. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Some, you know, wouldn't that be, what a psychic, what a psychic business that would be. <laughs> Adults, um, um, discovery tools from um, our famous afterlife celebrity guests. Wow, I can make millions on Above Life channel. Wow, maybe I could pay the bills with that. <laughs> I think he's just pulling my leg, but I don't know. Let me just see it. There's other things in this field that he's like, it's not stereotypical. Things are not straightforward. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Freddie, Jesus. Okay, all right. Oh, can we talk about sex and spirituality before we shift into maybe talking about relationship with Jim? Can we talk about sex and spirituality, like a religion, religious stuff and religious views? So people who are re religious and who've been taught certain things about sex, that it's about um, reproduction and it's, and it's um, like, um, not, I'm not just talking even just definition, but definition of like a man and a woman or whatever that is. Um, and for the purpose of having babies and stuff, like this whole conversation blows that all out of the water, which we all know, I think most of the people who watch Above Life Channel are much more open and understanding about different perspectives and attitudes about um, relationships and sexuality and sexual expression and act the actual act of having sex with another person. I think um, it would be interesting to hear because he's he came from a very religious family and background. Yep. So. Yep. So what, is there anything about that that you, Fred, would want to share that might actually help other people like shed a light on, on maybe, maybe how they're feeling themselves or understanding um, how that still fits in, how you can still be an, a religious and a sexual person, a person that does want to express and connect with others in human form sexually. He's like, now we're getting somewhere. He said, yeah, it's a, it's a hard topic. You can't tell people what to believe or what to believe in. And he says, it, it feels like it's deeply personal. And he said, like, for me, it's my family and respect, respect for my family. I didn't um, wave it in their face. And um, it was out of respect for my family and for the values that I was raised in. And it's not that I felt like ashamed of myself and, and yet, like many, I struggled with my sexuality because it wasn't the normal thing. It wasn't something you saw on television like you do now. It wasn't like there were gay characters in, 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 um, that were the main characters in movies about that or, or anything like that. There, it wasn't that, you know, he says. So, but it's not necessarily that, there's a, that I tie shame to it, he's saying, but there definitely is a lot of mix of emotion. And so that I think he's saying transcend that that is true now. That would be true yep. now for anybody. And especially, and even even if you're even if you're straight, even if you're heterosexual, that 
having sex, when to have sex, is it okay in marriage, out of marriage? And some of that stuff seems to be dictated by your family values, how you're raised, he says, and by your, um, the religion and, and this, uh, this understanding of what God is and how you relate to the God or the concept of God. This is deep. And he's like, this is deep, but God, the embodiment of God for some was Jesus. For others was other, there were other forms, you know, Buddha, Allah, et cetera, Muhammad, et cetera, whoever, all the people, right? There are many adaptations of the incarnation of God. And if the human body is made in the image of God, then we are all competent, capable, able, I can't pick the right word that he would say, competent, capable, able, pick one, to make decisions that are best for us, but at the same time, um, honoring the values and beliefs that raised us, got us to this point. Yeah. He's saying, it's not that I rejected my religion. It's not that I was angry or felt ab abandoned from that, or I was afraid I would be rejected. He's like, it's not about that. There is a mix up of feelings and emotions that's for everybody. And it's also a very personal thing, religion and sex, mm -hmm. <laughs> just like politics, very personal thing. Um, so to, to kind of move through that the best way you can, he's like, you just got to be honest with yourself. You got to be honest with yourself and you got to be willing to love yourself and to let yourself be free yeah. of what you think maybe the past taught you to let yourself be open to maybe different ways of looking at things or experiencing the world. And that's just, and he's saying, that's just in general, that's like life information, not just like sex information or relationship information. That's just general. Um, like he's not giving me the vibe that religion screwed him up or anything or religion screws people up. No. He's just really articulating it from a personal perspective. Do you get anything to yeah. add on that, Hallie? Um, he's, yeah, he's, I think the key there is loving yourself and knowing your own beliefs. You see, you have to be comfortable with what you believe, not what anybody else is telling you. And if you feel that this is right for you, then do it. Don't let anybody else dictate how you should live your life. You have to live it for yourself. I think that the energy that he is presenting very strongly, and I hope those of you who are clear, um, clear sentient, empathic, which most of you are, if you're Freddie fans, that's exactly how he connects with you. And he's that heart space. You'll feel this, that he's presenting this as very much, uh, he wasn't in, in your face with his family. He wasn't like, I got to fight because you're the opposite of me. And this is who I am. And this is what I believe. And so now I'm going to have conflict with my family. It was, this is who I am and how I feel about myself and this respect for his family and how his family yeah. feels. And, and that's not the same. Everybody does not have that same experience. Everybody does not have a family that would be loving or accepting. And it's not, he's not making me feel like there's fear of not being accepted. There's just this level of feeling like, and it's not that he's isolated either. He just literally owns it as his own identity and part of himself and doesn't think that it's something that has to be accepted by his family in order to validate that who he is. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's like this yeah, bounce back effect. Yeah. It's kind of fascinating, you guys, because people who come out and people who have um, the, oh God, how do I say this? The understanding of identity and sexual identity. And if you're struggling with that, or if you've been through this process, you understand what I'm, what I'm sharing here is that there's like this, almost like this need to be validated by saying that or coming out, coming out when really you got to come in, you got to like be comfortable in your own skin enough to advocate for yourself inside of yourself, to let yeah. the old patterns or the values that are outdated for you it's like an old computer program. You don't use the old computer programs with the new technology. You get the new phone, you get the next technology. This is the same thing, the next values that are yours, but not maybe your family's, but it doesn't mean the family's bad and you're good or, or it doesn't mean you're accepted or rejected. It doesn't have to be that way. It's more coming in to yourself, not coming out. Hey, everybody, here I am, you know? But I think that there is a pressure or a feeling of, um, by not articulating that or by not making it a thing in your family 
that it would be maybe like hiding it or feeling ashamed, but he's not making me feel any kind of shame about that. The only shame that I feel when I feel Freddie about his sexuality is in his relationship with Mary. Yeah. And as soon as yeah. he knew, it wasn't right away. He didn't come out and tell her. It was a while, a while, because yeah. he wanted to make sure it wasn't just a fad, a kind of a passing curiosity, not curiosity. That's that's kind of disrespectful to say it that way. That's not what it is. But it kind of feels like he started having, he started becoming unfaithful, having some experiences with men. And because it wasn't with a woman, it didn't feel like it was being unfaithful to Mary, yet he deeply loved Mary and connected with her as a human, like a, like, like yeah. the pansexual kind of overarching spiritual love energy, the God goddesses love energy. And yet at the same time in human form, he definitely had a preference. And once he realized that it was a preference, that's when he was, that's when he had to tell her. Yeah. And that was but heartbreaking. You guys heartbreaking for him that legitimately was heartbreaking. And I think that he, I don't know if he ever really got over that in this lifetime. Yeah. I mean, that, that was the biggest um, concern of it. He did not want to hurt her. He loved her with all his heart and soul. And he knew this would hurt her. Mm -hmm. And he always struggled with that. And he, he's so grateful that Mary remained in a part of his life that she accepted him for who he was and they continued their relationship, not exactly the same relationship, but in some ways it brought them even closer. Right, right. And I wonder how Jim really felt about that. And maybe we should be channeling Jim and have a conversation with him about that. I don't know if he talked to me, to be honest with you. Um, but that brings us back then to Jim yeah. and the conversation of his relationship with Jim. So I get this feeling that Jim was more of a, um, not a Mr. Right, like a perfect partner, but a, 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 a somebody that... Um, I don't want to say right, Mr. Right now. I don't know. I don't want to be disrespectful, but I feel like um, he, it feels like it was somebody that he could trust that Freddie felt like he could trust, but not somebody, but, but it feels like Jim had a little bit of a uh, insecurities, a lot of insecurities, even if they had, um, I feel like in their relationship had multiple partners at the same time together. I feel like they had some, and I'm not going to say polyamory going on, but definitely um, some multiple partners um, coming into their relationship is what it looks like to me, at least early on. And then maybe after a while settling down and not having that, um, almost like a little bit of an, a border. Okay. Let's say it this way, Hallie, see what you think of this open relationship. Yes. Do you feel that? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I feel that too. And I think people who are very monogamous or, or, or very, are very focused on like one person at a time kind of thing. I mean, one person relationships, which is traditional. Let's just be honest. That's the majority of like what's presented now. Um, values wise too, for everybody, just like common, commonly, I shouldn't say everybody commonly accepted. That's the majority, right? Um, I think people have a hard time accepting the fact that they were in an open relationship, but it wasn't articulated that way. So I think people think that Jim cheated because I think that they kind of expect Freddie to be able to do that. And I don't know if it's because he has more power, he has more clout or whatever, but I think that's wrong. And I think that what people are picking up on as far as the relationship and it not feeling good to Jim after Freddie died, especially his kind of angst about it and the nitpicking stuff with Mary kind of seems like nitpicking. I think that Jim genuinely was hurt. And yeah. I think that he wanted more of a, a focused attention relationship with Freddie. And he didn't really ever feel like he fully had that. And I don't think it was because of other sex partners. I think it was because of Mary. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Jim knew, I think, I don't know if it's the right word is his place, but he knew Mary was number one. And it, that, al it, that always bothered him. And th that's where he focused his anger after Freddie died, but it wasn't really anger towards Mary. It was just anger that Freddie was gone. And so he took it out on Mary more than anything else. There's a lot of hurt. Yeah. A lot of hurt. I can yeah. see a lot of hurt there. I am also going to say too, that I don't think that it doesn't feel to me like, and maybe Freddie can validate this, that when he was with Mary, that he was with multiple partners with her. Like, I don't think the three of them were, or the no. two of them were together with other people. I don't see that at all. I see her very much like, okay, well, this is where you are and this is who you are. 
and I'm going to love you, but it's going to be different. Yeah. And I legitimately think that that's how it evolved. And I think other people maybe might look at their relationship and think, oh, well, she's just a freeloader. Then she just stuck around because of the fame. Cause come on, let's be honest. People would think that I would think that yep. until you talk to Freddie and especially the way that Mary is vilified in the media and in books and through fans. Um, but the fan thing, I think, especially with women, it feels like a jealousy or an envy to me. To be I, I think honest. that's a lot to do with it. Yeah. A lot to do with it. I think there's a but, lot of women yeah. fans that feel kind of almost this jealousy energy because Mary's still alive too. So Freddie is communicating with Mary just as much as he's communicating with you or could communicate with you. Yeah. And we all know that she is definitely, he is definitely communicating with her. He is definitely connected to her. Yeah. We know that you and I, like we know, Yeah. and he can maybe validate. Should we ask him? Fred, are you hanging out with Mary or are you still connected to Mary in this lifetime? Yes, very much. Very much. Yeah. He did not like her first husband. Is she divorced? Yes, she is. Okay, because he did not like him. Really? He's like, mm. but she has to make her own choices. She's a grown woman and I'm not going to get involved. But if she asks me what I think, I will tell her what I think. But I'm not going to get involved because I've made, he's saying, I've made plenty of bad choices. So it's easy for everybody. He's kind of like, it's easy for everybody to judge Mary for her choices because every, you know, um, but, but me, because she only has one or two mistakes and I have hundreds of them. That's kind of what he's saying indiscretions he says hundreds of indiscretions and she has like a couple and it's like oh, oh my gosh how dare she yeah no i didn't expect her to be a maid an old maid it's like kind of a joke too he's like saying don't be an old maid mary don't be an old maid you can't be an old maid and then, you know i i think a lot of the way fans treat mary too is because she's so private i mean mm. She has never really opened up after Freddie died about anything. She, she's kept that personal to herself and even Garden Lodge. I mean, like she lives there. That's a, almost like a shrine to her. She doesn't want to share it mm. with all the fans and they resent her for it. Mm. But I, I can, I can see her point of view. I mean, it's, it's like a sacred spot for her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. It reminds me of other places like Graceland with Elvis yeah. and here in Minnesota, Paisley Park with Prince. Fans have a lot of opinions about it. And I think it's because we as fans, as human beings, when these icons transition, we, they're like so legendary. They literally are like a saint or a goddess or a deity kind of thing that they seem so much larger than life even in the afterlife that we want to immortalize them and memorialize them in ways that um, where we could go pay our respects or go visit yeah. or that kind of a thing. And, and so I think that's a natural thing, especially because we like have graveyards and cemeteries and have things like that. And I think that's natural way of grieving or collective grief. But I also think it is really a huge hardship on the family, the person, the people who really knew that person as a person. Yeah. Because famous people are people. And just because they're in the public eye doesn't mean we own a right to them. Just because you buy their music or go to their, you're receiving their gift. You should pay for that. You yeah. should, you should um, 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 feel like you're contributing to them and they're giving to you. It's an exchange. It's a balanced exchange, but they don't owe you anything else. They don't owe you more information about their lives. They don't owe you more, more this or more that, or what, like when people retire, like Elton John, just, um, I think his last concert in Minnesota, he just had, or something they were talking about on the radio or something. Yeah. And like, is a big deal. And um, that he might be, he's retiring or whatever it is. Well, they have a right to do that. We don't own them. Yeah, they're wealthy. Yeah, they have, but they've given up a lot of their privacy. So I think Mary holding on to her privacy is in a way kind of keeping Freddie as a human, yeah. like as a as yeah. as that he was also a person, right? Frock, frock as a person. Bro, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. 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 Um, wow. Okay. Wow, the sex talk really got intimate. And talking about relationships, we talked about Jim and Mary. People are going to string us up. Just so you know, Hallie. I know. Don't read, I know. Don't read the comments. <laughs> Do not read the comments. Like Fred would say, don't read the tabloids. Yep. Don't read the trash. Mm -hmm. It's only good for lining the litter boxes, right?
Woof. Okay. So is there anything else, Hallie, that you want to share or express about the topic of sex or relationships or anything that he's brought up? I love that he's breaking some molds here. I really appreciate that. I think that's awesome, especially for people who can relate to different types of relationships and different um, sexual orientations and that kind of a thing. I think that's awesome. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to mention, um, he was always conscious of who he was. So when he started a relationship, that was always in, in the back of his mind. Do they want me for me or do they want me for Freddie Mercury? And what, because you're not even, it's not even a relationship with just Freddie. It's, it's the whole lifestyle of him because of who he is. Right. And so, and that's one of the reasons why he felt so comfortable with Mary because he was with Mary before he was famous. Mm. Mary was the one that was paid the bills at first. So he, he knew that she loved him for him and not the money, not the fame. And that was always something he, he says, I, I kind of screwed it up in some ways because he, he always challenged, he, he would challenge people to see how far they, he could push them to see if he could push them away because if they, really loved him for him they would probably say I'm not putting up with this crap but if they loved him loved the fame more they would take anything just to be in that lifestyle right who are your it, real friends kind of yeah vibe. yeah that's a lonely place yeah I've it, I've, I've I've had that conversation with yeah. Prince also yeah, yeah. It's a very lonely place yeah. and he said that's one of the reasons why he connected with Jim so well is because Jim didn't put up with it. Jim actually left him at one point and Freddie had to go begging to him. Maybe not begging, but he, Freddie had to reach out to him because Jim said, I don't care who you are. I'm not putting up with this crap. That was when he was a little too wild, it seems like. Yeah, yeah. Because he would kind of, you guys, he would get, he gets creative just like he's creative in music and a lot of energy. It seems like his sex drive was a lot of energy at yep. times. Like he would go on spurts is what it looks like. Like, like almost not sex addict, like, but very much, um, active sex drive is what I see. Yep. And then also times where there's just not that, and he could be very just monogamous and very, just very contented, you know, kind of, and then like spurts of like, I want, I really need to, to feel, um, excitement and alive. And that is through di different partners. That's what it just to be yeah. really frank with everybody. That's what it looks like to me. Like open relationships his whole life is what it looks like to me. But he also said there's nothing, you know, there's nothing really wrong with an opening relationship because you have more love to give than just one person. Right. So why not? Saying, yeah. Why not give it as long as the other person accepts the open relationship as well? Right. And I want to be clear. It's not because he had fame and he thought, well, I can do this because I'm Freddie Mercury. And if you don't no, like it, well, no. I'm just not going to be with you. It wasn't like that. He genuinely was just a loving kind of a lovable kind of a wanting to be in connection with people, having a lot of energy and charisma, but it, yeah. a lot of sexual energy that that's the, probably one of the best ways to describe that. It's a lot of sexual energy. I yeah. can feel yeah. it at the root chakra. I can feel it very expressive. And then it's like when you like having sex, very vocal, very vocal. And that like even singing and kind of getting into a place of singing could almost be like orgasmic for him. Like that his, his voice is connected to that sexual kind of uh, um, spark, sensuality, just <gasps> Fire. There we go. Fire yeah. energy, that alchemy. I can feel that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Is there anything else you want to share, Hallie? No, I don't think so. I think we've covered a lot. Of How do you think he feels about this conversation? <laughs> He's saying he tried to behave himself. 
I think he did good. Yeah, yeah I think he did too. too. Freddie, yeah. you did wonderful. Thank you. And he's like, not trying to push Bridget's buttons too much. You didn't. You were fine. And I, I'm like a teacher going, come on, let's focus. Let's focus. So good. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Hallie, my friend from Canada, or my psychic friend. Thank you, everybody here on Above Life channel on YouTube. This is a little unique, huh? A conversation with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife, a sex talk for uh, you guys to listen to. And we didn't just talk about sex, baby. We talked about relationships, different types of relationships and understanding um, the energy of our senses and sensuality and our body and expression of love and all of these, all of the things that go around um, these topics and kind of bring them together for connection. So thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you've enjoyed this conversation with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife as always. I hope that we have inspired your spirit and filled you with some hope. <laughs> that coin doesn't fit here. Filled you with some fire. Hope we've lit your fire today on Above Life channel YouTube. <laughs> Don't forget to check out the playlist if you want to learn more about Freddie Mercury. In the afterlife, we've had tons of conversations. He's very much an advocate for empaths. He's talked a lot about love, self-love, unconditional love, just really a beautiful, sweet soul to be connected to and through in the afterlife. And you can also connect with him on your own as well. I do have a meditation on that playlist that can help you do just that. Again, that's the playlist here at Above Life channel on YouTube. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Hallie. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you very much. All right. So we're going to end this recording now here.